All right, welcome to my Godot 3D third-person Souls-like controller template tutorial. It's a mouthful. Uh, this is a t template for making a Souls-like or Bloodborne-style character controller. Um, I've got included uh, attack combos, because I find a lot of these templates do not have examples of how to do attack combos. There's also a special attack where if you're sprinting and you attack, he will do a wide area attack. Also very Souls-like or Bloodborne-like is being able to uh, change direction and dodge mid-attack, uh, which is important for the gameplay style of Souls-like games. There's a platformer-style jump. Sloping is solved. He will not slide. Uh, there's a 360-degree camera for those cinematic uh, Souls-like moments. And there's also a built-in strafe, although I have not uh, set up animations for that. That was part of the, the camera code that I borrowed. All right. so. The important part for me was making a hot swappable template where you'll be able to quickly bring in your own 3D mesh and your own animations and quickly deploy them in a Souls-like uh, environment so you can kind of prototype games quickly. Um, so let's get to it. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so when you first uh, bring in my, my template, this is what it will look like. Most of it is environment. The meat and potatoes is here in this Godot Souls character. But uh, even he, we're going to just delete because I want to show you from scratch how you will use this template. So what you'll do is you'll go into my player folder. And in here, you'll see a player template scene. I'm going to drag and drop that into the world. And this is just the stuff I've built for you to make this uh, quickly deployable on your own mesh with your own animations. Uh, it's got the kinematic body and the script for it, the collision shape, and the camera programming. And it's a script. And then the animation tree pre-configured with all the nodes you'll need for your own mesh and your own animation uh, animation player. What you're going to need is a mesh that already has baked in the uh, these eight animations, or eight animations that we can put into these slots. So an idle, a walk, a run loop, and then we'll need a jump, a roll, and then three attacks. It could be the same animation, but it's cooler if they're three different distinct attacks. To give you an example of this, I bounced over to uh, Mixamo, and I grabbed the Paladin Knight character. I downloaded the eight animations, again, an idle w loop, a walk loop, a run loop, roll, jump, attack, attack, attack. And with those downloaded, I bounced over to this wonderful GitHub page, where I brought in the character mesh, and then brought in the animations, and then was able to export to GLTF and have it all baked in all at once for me. Uh, saved that to my desktop, and now I have a character with eight animations ready to go in my project. So let's bounce over and grab that. He's on my desktop, so I'm just going to drag and drop him into my project. Godot is going to import him. All right, you can see the knight is right here. Uh, let's open him up. Now, I do not need it to open as a new scene because I'm only going to borrow certain parts of it and paste it into the template. So I'm going to say open anyway. You see I've got a few spatial nodes, skeleton, and of course the animations. Um, we can make sure these animations work. They work. Uh, and you'll notice the scale is huge. Sometimes on that importer, uh, the scale is huge because here's like a meter and a half, and this knight is you know, enormous. Um, so sometimes you have to click through real quick and check the transforms. Yeah, right here. Let's uh, reset your translation and scale you down to like a hundredth of the size. There we go. There we go. So now he's about a now he's about a meter and a half in height. That looks a lot better. All right, and I need those things. I need the uh, this is just everything kind of bundled up. I've got the node. I got uh, his meshes and his animation player. I'm just going to copy and paste that into my template. Cool. I think I'll rename this node too, just so he's easier to spot. Night. Now we know that is what holds all my meshes. I've got the night animation player. I no longer need this. So I'm going to close that. Don't save. I think I will save right now, just so we don't lose our progress, uh, the, the template now that I've got the night added. So now all I have to do is point the stuff I've prepped for you to this mesh and uh, the, uh, the animation player. So we'll click on one at a time and just go through each thing. Player template. Here's where the script lives. I have it exporting out to the inspector here everything you need to pick. Um, so the first thing, player animation tree. Click on your player animation tree. Player character mesh. Um, you can click on the mesh, or you can just pick any of his parents. It's just going to, what's going to rotate around there. So I'm going to grab the parent knight. 
Um, there's also tweakables. If these animations or if your character's scaled in a different way for your world, feel free to adjust gravity, jump force, walk speed, run speed, dash power. It's all right there, and it will update the script for you. Collision shape's good, nothing to do. Camera root. We have to pick the player character mesh that the camera is going to rotate around. So I'm just going to pick the uh, night again, the uh, night mesh, or spatial node. It's also a camera vertical max and minimum clamp, so the camera can't go above or below the character too far. Um, you can leave the defaults, or you can tweak with them, do what you want. Animation tree. We're going to go over here to the animation player and select animation player. This is the night's animations that we just imported. So now, all of my nodes and all my state conditions are going to try to run the night's animations. Uh, if we set this to active, yeah, we'll see that he just became active. I can't even see him. There we go. He just became active. Um, what we're going to want to do now, because your animations might be named different, things might be wonky, you're going to want to click through each one of these nodes and make sure they are pointed to the correct ones. So make sure that idle is selecting the idle loop, make sure that walk is selecting the walk loop. Um, any of them might be off, you might, you know, you just have to click through each one and select the correct one for, the, for that node. Um, if you find that any of the animations don't work correctly, like walk, run, uh, or like jump, look at that, yeah, like jump. If jump doesn't work immediately, just click off it and click back onto it. Jump. All right. So now let's go walk and jump. There we go. See, he's working now. Clicking off and on it sometimes solves it. All those are now pointing to the correct animations. And we're basically done. So again, the player is pointing to the tree. Player character mesh pointing to the knight. Collision shape doesn't need to be adjusted. Camera needs to know what to rotate around, the knight. The animation tree needs to know what animation player is holding all these knights animations, and the nodes need to know what animation to play for what action. With all that set up, we can save. And in our world, our knight should be ready to test. All right, we have walking, we have running, we have the sprinting attack, we have uh, attack one, attack two, attack one and dodge, dodge works. We got jumps and the jump animation responding. And uh, we have the strafe, which again is not programmed with an animation. All right, so that is all working. Um, a shout out to where a lot of this code comes from. Um, a lot of the camera work, most of the camera work, comes from the Godot third person controller made by Johnny Rudreau. Very, very good. Um, I liked it very much, although the controller itself was a bit more focused on shooters, where it didn't have a jump programmed, didn't have any sort of melee pre prepped. Um, so I kind of reworked it a little bit, uh, tying it into more of a melee-based uh, action third-person game. Um, I borrowed some of the controller's uh, ideas from Garbage's tutorials. I love his tutorials. They're very funny. He's got a ton of them. They're super short and super informative. Uh, and then the last was borrowing the state machine idea from David Ochoa, where David did a great job of uh, setting up uh, sort of a state machine using advanced conditions in the state machine rather in the tree state tree rather than uh, focusing on destinations. So rather than you push the run button, it will now travel or play the run uh, node. Instead, when you when running is true or when walking is true, it opens conditions to open up the pathways to get to certain node destinations. Um, to see what that looks like is over here in the uh, animation tree. If you were to expand parameters and conditions, these are the conditions currently baked into the script. Is on air, not moving, is not walking, not running, on floor, running, walking. And so when these are on or off, it turns on or off certain paths between the nodes. So if we're idle and it becomes true, let's bounce over. If we're, walk, uh, if we're idle and it becomes true that we are walking, he'll start walking. And if we're walking and it becomes true that we are running, he'll run. And if we're running and it becomes true that we are in the air, it'll trigger the jump. And he'll stay in that jump, falling, until he's on the floor again, at which point it'll open the paths for him to run again. So it's just opening and closing these paths to allow him to get to different uh, animations. Then the roll, the, the attack, and the big attack, those are all one-shot playbacks. So once those happen, they fly right back into the condition-based kind of center area, which is idle, walk, run, and jump, which are mostly condition-based, and the other ones are uh, one-shots. In the script, you'll see that as well if you feel like adding your own conditions and buttons. Up at the top, I have the those animation tree node names with their 
with you know the, the names here. Um, in the non-physics section, I have the one shots where if you push attack, it will travel to the attack, or if you push roll, it will start the roll action, interrupting whatever's going on. Um, in the physics process, we have the conditions, whether you are walking, running, rolling, etc., whether that's true or false, checking every second. And then uh, further down, when in the air, you'll see it'll trigger not being on the floor. If you're attacking, it'll trigger that it's true that you're attacking, etc. So those conditions become true or false depending on what's going on. And uh, depending on if those are true or false, here at the end, I have the state machine where if you're on the floor, this condition is true. You're on the floor. And again, is on floor is the uh, condition over here, is on floor. Over here, I'm going to turn those guys back off because I don't, shouldn't have them all on. Um, so that's how you can update the script and add and extend it if you'd like. You just you know add more conditions if you have more specific conditions. You can add more one-shot actions in the non-physics area, uh, add more physics-based things that happen every second down in the physics area, and then just tie in more animation tree conditions to those paths. It's uh, really extensible. And so just like that, we have a new character tossed into a new controller, ready to prototype. Hope, uh, hope this helps you guys out. I'm excited to see what Souls-like games get built from it.